How's it going, everybody? So when I first started using ChatGPT, one of the first things I wanted to try out was to see if it was able to wrangle together complex data sets that I could then output into reporting tools like a Tableau or a Power BI, for instance. Not only was this possible, it also resulted in a massive time savings when it came to pulling together all these disparate data sources. So let's step through an example of leveraging ChatGPT to create a mock data set for us, and then we'll ask it to pull together another data set using some real world sample data. So before we get started, this version of ChatGPT was trained on data through 2021. So I'm currently recording this in January of 2023. So any real data we query is only valid through 2021. So it's essentially frozen in time. As ChatGPT evolves and is trained on more recent data, this obviously will change, but currently it is what it is. There is also no clean way to export out files from ChatGPT. It involves some copying and pasting of values into tools like in Excel. You may also experience some hiccups when you're querying against ChatGPT. This is just due to the current platform, which is almost always at or near capacity. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, so let's first use ChatGPT to generate a mock data set. So in order to do that, we'll just come down to this little bar here. And we'll ask ChatGPT to create a mock data set of customer purchase purchases. So we can see it's outputting a table for us with customer ID, the product, quantity purchased, the price, and the purchase date. It only gave us five rows, so we can ask to return more rows. And at the same time, maybe introduce a new dimension. So let's say, can you please add day of week purchased to output and output 25 rows. So you can see we added a brand new dimension and it's beginning to populate that as well. And also adding additional records to our output based on my ask of having 25 rows. And you could also modify the ask. So right now we're analyzing what looks to be clothing items. But if I stop generating this data, and I'll say, please change product type to food. ChatGPT will now update our query with food name and begin throwing in food items. So I'll just fast forward until this completes. All right, so our mock data set has been generated. And now in order to get it out of ChatGPT, we'll just copy all the rows. Control C, we'll open up a new Excel document and simply paste them in. And it pulls in all the headers as well. So now I'll save this data set down to my local machine. I'll just call it random food purchases. And now I can plug that data into a tool like Tableau. And quickly identify the customers who purchased the most. So customer 2015, eight and three, all purchased the most items. So obviously it's a pretty simple data set, but you can quickly see how you contextually can add the various food items to any sort of data set you want to quickly mock up to share with others. So now we've generated our mock data set. Let's take a look at generating 
a real world data set. So back in ChatGPT, let's say we, I want to create a chart that shows the count of US presidents based on what state they were born in. So in order to do that, I need to ask ChatGPT for a whole bunch of dimensions and then it'll output a table, much like we saw up here. But prior to doing that, I just want to quickly ask ChatGPT, at what age did each US president get elected? And you can see in this sort of form, it doesn't create a table by default. So the language that you ask the question in definitely modifies what you're going to get out of ChatGPT. So I'm going to stop generating and I'll ask ChatGPT, can you please include their birth date, death date, and birth location as well in that list. You can see that it's providing us with a very detailed response, almost looks like a, a written sentence. However, that's not something we could easily consume in a reporting tool like a Power BI or a Tableau. So I'm going to have it stop generating the output. And now I'll ask it to create a table of all US presidents with the following dimensions order elected, their name, their birth city, birth state, age elected, and number of years served as president. So much more specific in the ask. And it's defaulted to a table output because I prompted it to with a create a table. You can also ask it to create a CSV. And in that case, it'll generate the output with commas separating each of the headers as well as the values within. So I'll just go ahead and fast forward this until this table is created. And then we'll pull this data out of ChatGPT and analyze it in Tableau. All right, it looks like ChatGPT got hung up on row 31. Not to worry, we can simply ask it to continue and it will resume that output. This is likely due to just this tool just coming to market and having a lot of folks hit it at the same time. So some queries may just stop being answered. All right, so our list is complete. So let's go ahead and start at the top part. And we'll begin selecting all the values until the cutoff point. And we'll ask the um, ChatGPT one more time to generate this row afterwards, just to fill in the years that this president served. So back in Excel, I'll create a brand new document. Paste in the output. Resume at row 32. So again, we do not have this particular year served for this president. So I'll just go ahead and ask ChatGPT straight up. How many years did her Hoover serve as president? Four years. Okay, our data set is now complete. I'll save it as US presidents. And again, the question I wanted answered was, were there any states that were hotspots for birthing US presidents? So I'll go ahead and just open this data up in Tableau.
create a new sheet, make sure US presidents is selected. And now I'll go ahead and just add birth date and then take the count, double click. And now we can quickly see that Ohio birth seven, Virginia eight and New York five. An easier way of getting to this information versus a map would be to simply change it to a bar chart, descending, and then add the count as a label. So now we can see that there were eight U.S. presidents that were born in the state of Virginia. Who are they? Drop them on detail. And there you have it. And one last query. Um, so if you want to generate really complex data sets, so let's say what are the top 15 peaks in the state of Vermont? We can see that it outputs the mountain name, as well as the elevation. But let's say I want to know whether or not I can actually drive a vehicle to the peak. Again, this is something that would take hours and hours of research to Google all of these and find out whether or not they're drivable. But we can simply ask ChatGPT that. So how many, or I could say, please add a column that states whether or not a vehicle can be driven to the summit. Generate all output in table format. So we can see it's now outputting to table, it has the elevation feet meters, and whether or not a vehicle is actually able to drive to the summit of the mountain. So currently we can see that Killington can be driven to the summit. And it's looking at to, like that's about it. You can see it adds additional context. It's seasonal or if it's maintained or not. That's the power of ChatGPT. I'm really excited to see what this will evolve into as time goes by and leveraging it to create very complex data sets that otherwise would have taken hours of research to pull together all of that data. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and also subscribe for more great content just like this. I'll see y'all later.